Hey there, Hero Taku. This is Transformers Month, and this is day four of Transformers G1 slash Generations Week. And on today's review, it is Generations Springer, the triple changer that debuted in the 86 animated movie Transformers, the movie. One thing about Springer is he is a long awaited character to be remade in the classics. Henke Universe Generations line, because, well, every Springer that's come out has either been in his vehicle form of a car, or his aerial vehicle of a helicopter. It's never been a full-on triple changer, which this was a amazing feat and attempt by Hasbro. I automatically noticed that I've not even transformed him correctly to start out this review, and I'm finding it ironic. Anyways, after my first blooper here, anyways... He is a triple changer. I'm going to start off with helicopter form because, well, it's actually a really amazing feat altogether where his helicopter form actually features his gun as a turret, his sword as the actual rotor and the blade. And honestly, the biggest flaw here are how the arms form the back end of the helicopter. Uh, in the original G1, they actually went out and were full out wings and the fists became like missile missile launchers, similar to, I would say, Drift and Skyhammer's helicopter, having that kind of style of, a, like, a Blackhawk or an Apache, I believe. I, I always screw up which one's which. But the tail's nice. The only problem is these parts here get very loose over time, All along with the feet itself because of how it's built on a gear joint or whatever, a hinge joint over the wheel itself. Anyways, the helicopter form is nice. It looks amazing, and it's pretty cool. But... The vehicle form is also a really amazing feat, no, uh, nevertheless. Because once taking off the blade, once taking off the gun, all you necessarily have to do is just really work on the front here and work on the back, which you pull out the arms and fold them up where you can see his head. You flip out these pieces here, which are his little wing blades, which go under, and you pull out the rest of the front ends of the car doors, as well as rotate the wheel guards, which are kind of like cow catchers, I would say, when it's in its full-on aerial mode, and pull up the top hood of the car and put it into the back of the jet to reveal the rest of the actual driver's seat. And then all you gotta do is fold in the arms properly and lock them in place. Once having the cockpit in the hood of the car placed correctly, all you gotta do is bend in, or I should say bend out the, the tail of the helicopter, which will become his feet in robot mode, fold them in over the arms, and you have his car mode. His car mode's really nice, and it rolls pretty good and decent once everything is nice pushed in and locked into place. However, certain versions of the toy will not stay together as well as it should be, and it's just kind of fugly looking because it's kind of not all well attached and locked into place. Uh, there is technically a fourth form, which everyone calls the Bondmobile, which all you do is just unfold the feet and push out certain areas of the, I would say, front fender of the car to make it look like James Bond's, uh, convertible uh, submarine vehicle, but it's not a real form, it's just a fan-made form, and it's really interesting nonetheless, you can find it on TF World and Cybertron's uh, uh, customs and its forums, or fun things you can do with Transformers that you didn't know were there. Anyways, when transforming into robot form, it pretty much just goes through the combinations of how the vehicles uh, interlock between each other to reveal his true form. Now, like the modern-day classics toys in the Generations line, they're not so, I should say, modernized or relevant vehicles that their G1 counterparts would be based on. They're more or less the direct transitions of the IDW comics. Now, I do not knock IDW. I just feel like some of their designs are a little bit weird, abstract, abnormal, and tacky. Especially with Springer's robot form. 
His upper torso looks amazing and looks balls to the wall insane. Like, he can really mess you up like his G1 counterpart could. But his legs are a little bit to wish for. I like the idea of the wheels being there because of just the ideas of wheels for feet, possibly. In the comics, like, he can transform them to rotate on, which he can't do in the toy. is cool. But I don't really like how the rear wheels for the helicopter kind of just jut out as blades. His legs look a little bit, um... I, I should say, his legs look very thin and weak compared to his upper body, where he has a nice kind of build for his torso, and his arms are very bulky. I like the figure, I like the design, I like how it looks in the comics. It just is one of those designs that does and doesn't transition well in the toy. It trans transitions well for the vehicles, but the figure is kind of off and lopsided. But I like it nonetheless because it's a great attempt at the tr uh, triple changer gimmick that Transformers usually don't touch upon these days. I really just enjoy that I finally have a nice Springer figure that can go between car, helicopter, and robot. I'm glad I have, you know, a Springer toy in general that isn't just a, v a car as its vehicle or its helicopter as its main form, because Springer, I gotta say, is one of my favorites from the original movie, if not is one of my favorites out of the new debut. Uh, Transformers, just because it was intriguing, because I didn't know that many things about Transformers G1 when I saw the movie, I, I had a couple of episodes, so I only knew if you were a triple changer, you were like the hot, hot shit, you were pretty badass, and Springer was nonetheless like hot shit, just because he was like technically Ultra Magnus's second in command, which meant he was like pretty much higher up than Rodimus even was, even when he became... Rodimus Prime. So, that's how cool Springer is. Especially because, you know, he has a sword. He has now a cool double barrel shotgun energy cannon. It looks amazing. It's great. And the best part about this sword is it doubles as a really long bayonet that can either be placed at the top of the gun, which a bayonet is normally placed at the bottom of the gun, which it actually can do that as well because the hole is on both sides to actually do it correctly, which gives you one awesome combination. Anyways, it's a great recommendation to have and own. You can still pick these up in certain stores. Some of them are still shelf-warming. I'm pretty sure the best place to get them now would be probably a Ross's, because they're cheaper and more affordable. The current wave now is actually getting ready to release a Brainstorm, which is also a Headmaster. That is awesome to have and awesome to own. Honestly, anything that comes out, out of Transformers G1, the movie, or Season 3, is an automatic buy, I think, just because the Transformers were cooler, they actually tried to get more character development in, and they were a smaller niche. They weren't as expansive as the first two seasons. That's just my honest opinion. The series wasn't that great in this third and final season, but it was technically better attempted by having a smaller cast, cooler toys, and overall better designs. It just was better to me, which is great to actually have more characters from the later half of the show in the Generations wine, and I can't wait till we move on to other series. Honestly, pick him up, and also pick up his remold, Molded Brethren, or Brethren, Sunstorm, I believe his name is, or Sun Sandstorm? Sandstorm, yes, Sandstorm. Because they're awesome figures. I'm eventually going to pick up a Sandstorm because that thing just doesn't want to leave my store shelves anytime soon. Anyways, tomorrow we will have a review from Darkon's brother, Hydra Grimsley, and uh, that will close out our week for G1. Anyways, you can find more of these awesome Transformer reviews here on HerotaKu.com. Hirotaku's official YouTube channel. You can like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. As for myself, I am Wheelchair21, which you can find here on YouTube as Wheelchair21 and on Twitter as Wheelchair21. Anyways, we'll see you next time with another awesome Transformers review.